welcome to my Sims 4 video. Thank you for watching, and if you like my video, please like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. And if you'd like to reach me, you can reach me at my various social media platforms in the description of this video. <clears throat> and if you like this build, you can get it off the gallery at Roaring Bug. This build is called the Scarlet Victorian House, and it's based off that Pinterest picture that you saw at the beginning of the video. So I have been on a roll making a series of Victorian houses just using the base game. And I wanted to make this house because I thought it looked interesting and I thought it had a really good shape and I wanted to see if I can recreate it in The Sims. So this house is a little different compared to my other Victorian houses because I used a lot more red and uh, a, less let, a lot of less of the color white. I, I used a lot of white in my previous Victorian houses and this one is just primarily red and yellow. Um, frankly, that it feels a little food oriented being red and yellow, like ketchup and mustard, but you know, this is, this is the color scheme that I went with and I thought the red would be pretty on point for the season. It's currently getting a little colder now, getting into the autumn and with the autumn season, we get a lot of changes of the color of the leaves. So in order to, you know, commemorate those autumnal colors, I thought I would make this red Victorian home. So, you know, if you like this build, it's perfectly fine to use. I think it ends up becoming a, a three bedroom, three bath house. So it's pretty sizable. And um, I know I don't mention it, in my other videos, but uh, the houses next door are all of my other Victorian houses that I've made. So uh, I just want to acknowledge that the house on the right is a yellow Victorian, but that one I hadn't made a video for yet. And it the thing is that one uses a lot of packs. Uh, the house to the left is a base game only Victorian house and I, I believe that is on my channel so if you want to check it out you can. Uh, also with this house I used these multi windows where it has like two at a time or three at a time. It's like part of this base game set and I don't normally use this base game set of windows because it's pretty heavy on the trim and I haven't really used uh, this window frame because I just don't normally use that kind of trim. But I wanted to carry over that, it's kind of like a mustard yellow color throughout the build. So I just wanted to keep with that style. And um, this build had like kind of like a, like a design pattern on the tower on the second floor. I tried to recreate it with this um, wall detail and I thought it came out okay. I mean, it, it's good enough for what I can do with just base game. And uh, just a trick, if you're ever trying to put windows on houses, sometimes it's easier to put the windows on from the inside of the house than the outside. Uh, also, you can make it even just by counting uh, the squares on the tile system. So this house, like I said, is primarily just red and yellow. So I just wanted to keep it with this red brick. And I just wanted to do these different kind of little side porches. Um, I noticed that a lot of Victorian houses actually have these extra side porches. And my theory is, is that it's supposed to be like, uh, like an entrance way for service workers to get into a house. Like if you were a well-to-do person, because I figured you'd have to be pretty well-to-do to own a Victorian style home. 
like you'd probably have like a cook or a maid or something and they would have their own service entryway in order to like take in groceries or other kinds of nut lots for service for the house so i think that's that's why most victorian houses actually have like uh, an extra side entrance way and i think like the main entrance way is probably just for the main guests the main like family in order to receive people in their house and they would have like a foyer and a parlor and you know you know space to entertain so right now i'm trying to figure out the pathway to all of these different entrance ways and i end up nudging the house over uh, a little bit uh i'm sure you could see the the tool is that cross tool and when you select a site you move the entire lot uh, in case you don't know how to do that, that, that's the tool that you use in order to move a house. Um, so you can either move the entire lot or you could just move the building on the lot. Uh, that's in case you want to preserve uh, your landscaping. Uh, right now I don't have any landscaping, that's why I'm just up and lifting up the entire lot. Uh, I don't stick with this floor tile. Not that it's bad, it's like a cobblestone thing, but... Uh, I end up going something a little bit more red and this is a base game bush and I like it because I like the texture and I just kind of used a lot of it so you're gonna see this bush everywhere and I'm just sizing it down so that it fits everywhere so yeah just these are the things you have to do in order to make things pretty uh, beautiful things usually require patience and you know I, I feel like my builds could be a lot prettier if I had a lot more patience, but this is as much patience as I have in order to build. So, like I said, I, I enjoy Victorian houses just because I like the look of them. And I'm spinning around some of these bushes so they don't look all matchy-matchy. And I'm putting some more of these like tall, tall boy bushes here just so that it looks a little bit more interesting instead of all flat. Um, this landscaping is actually pretty tame. Uh, I don't really use that many flowers in this landscaping. Um, these are actually the lavender, but the lavender actually has different swatches. And I think that's uh, from an update in the base game, because I don't remember these lavender bushes coming in yellow, but you know, they, they do. and. I don't know if I ever tried, or maybe I just never tried to look for other color swatches for this, like, plant, but, you know, it, it came in yellow, and I wanted to keep with this color theme. And I put this planter box all around the outside in the garden, because I thought that would look very manicured and pretty, and I left this space open because I meant to put a tree there, and that's my favorite tree. And uh, yeah, you, you start building enough, you'll, you, will, you will find yourself a favorite tree. It's inevitable. So that is my favorite base game tree. Um, my favorite non-base game tree from the packs I do own is the Cottage Living Willow tree. Uh, but you know, it, it doesn't always fit. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But you know, this house is just base game only. So anyone can download it and anyone can, you know, have it. So, you know, it, like I said, I, I just wanted something anyone can download. And, you know, it it's, it's my own personal challenge, you know, trying to make these beautiful Victorian base game, Victorian homes, because I, I think they're, I think they're cool. Quite frankly, I just wanted to make something with build restrictions and you know you can make something just as pretty just using base game um that is to say like when i first started building i made boxes that i called modern because i didn't know what the heck i was doing so if you're a beginner building in the sims i don't feel bad you know it it looks great what i'm doing right now but it, <laughs> There is a lot of research and, and you know, practice involved to get this good. Um, so, 
Yeah, if you start off just making modern boxy looking houses, yeah, like it, it's totally fine. Um, I started out that way and you know, like I said, I, I now I enjoy making these Victorian houses that I go all out on trying to make it look very pretty, very stately, and yeah, okay, so now I'm just gonna talk about what I'm doing now, which is trying to map out the interior layout on the first floor, and it wasn't easy. Uh, I actually had to go through some footage and edit out how I tried to put down these stairs, so I ended up putting the stairs in this location and making a large bathroom off to the side. So and that layout on the first floor is very similar to what ends up happening on the second floor. But right now this front area is the living room. So this would be the parlor room and it's red. So again, the, the color scheme of this house is just red and yellow. And I thought that couch was way too big. So I substituted for the love seat and I made this tower into a little nook. So it's a little canoodle nook for your sims to just, you know, hang out in. They probably end up reading a book there. But now I'm just putting down a rug and moving around the seats and putting a TV. So this little area is like, again, like I said, it's just the living room. And I'm just putting down curtains everywhere. And now I am trying to figure out this stairway and I realized that the stairs should be flipped the other way, so I flipped it around and put it into place. And this is a large bathroom. Uh, I, I did this layout for this bathroom that you're seeing right now, but it ends up changing later on. But I hadn't figured out how to change it the second time around until after I started furnishing the bathroom on the second floor. So this, this is not the final product. And normally I wouldn't really show the footage of how I do the furnishing for bathrooms, but this time around I thought it'd be nice just to show like the complete furnishing of the house. So now I'm moving on to the kitchen. So this is just a really small kitchen. Uh, I didn't put any seating in this kitchen. It's just purely for um, function. So I put um, the regular kitchen appliances and I stack these cabinets in order to make a very full looking uh, kitchen cabinetry area. And the reason why I didn't put any seating in this kitchen is because there's a door that, there's like two doors in, in that room. Actually it's three, so there's four? There's four doors? It's a lot of doors in that room, so I couldn't really fit a table there. Frankly, I think in gameplay, I think your sims will probably end up taking their meals outside on the deck because I put a table and chairs in the deck area. But I think that's fine because the deck is covered. Um, if you have seasons, it might be a little awkward if they go out there in the winter because sims don't seem to care if it's winter if they're just programmed to go to the nearest table or chair but you know they can eat alfresco and this room here i decided to turn into a skill building room so i put a computer an easel a guitar a chess table and two kid uh skill building items the science table and the art table and now i am moving on to the second floor which is going to have the bedrooms so I end up turning this into three bedrooms on the second floor and a bathroom. So it's two bathrooms, sorry. There's, there's another ensuite bathroom in the primary bedroom. So like again, I make the colors red and yellow because those are my theme colors and I I edited out you seeing me furnish these bathrooms because after you've seen one bathroom you've basically seen them all 
and this room is going to be the infant slash toddler room. Uh, this infant slash toddler room has access to the bathroom, which is actually really good for gameplay because you kind of need the bathtub in order to wash your infants and your toddlers. So I decided to make this large bathroom into like a Jack and Jill bathroom with access from the hall or access through the infant room. And I decided to move around the like the tub and the sink. So I just moved the tub and the sink around and I end up doing that for both the first floor and the second floor. And I think it worked out because I was able to fit the toddler potty in the bathroom. And you're just seeing me put curtains everywhere again. And you know, I, I just put the decorations in for this toddler room. And I just move over the windows because I end up deleting a window. And this super red room with the ensuite bathroom is going to be the primary bedroom for the parents. So I just kept everything red and it looks like a very traditional bedroom, but you know, they have a full bath and I use the Jerry pictures to pretend to be family portrait pictures. And I put a, like a dresser, a mirror and a few clutter items. I don't do a lot of clutter items. Uh, I just don't really like clutter and uh, once I actually killed an NPC with clutter. I had like a nanny over at my house in my sims house and they ended up getting killed because I got stuck behind a potty which I didn't even know about until the Grim Reaper showed up so yeah uh, too much clutter can kill. But as we go on we are in the third bedroom and this bedroom is for two kids so I, I usually furnish bedrooms for kids instead of teenagers just because they require more objects and in this bedroom I didn't put the skill building items for kids because it's downstairs in the skill building room and I just made it look a little interesting with these posters all around but um, when I make these Victorian homes, I don't really have a family in mind when I create them. I just try to cover all my bases for every life stage of Sims. So, you know, it's rare, but in this occasion, I actually had an attic space that worked out and I decided to turn it into an extra bedroom. So this house can actually fit eight Sims, which is the full max of sims you can have in a household. This house can comfortably fit eight sims, um, which I think is great because I rarely can do that. I mean, you could probably just turn this extra attic space that I'm filling with like debug boxes into another bedroom. And now I'm just adding some wall decor on the outside. I like these because they look nice as just faux windows. Uh, that's the side for the fireplace. So there, there you go, the fireplace. And I decided to put some curtains there. And that should be the end of my video. I don't think there's much else, just the trash can and the mailbox. And yeah, that should be it. So thank you for watching. Bye.